Welcome to the Invasive Species Action Network's fly tying series on invasive pests. Invasive species are a problem globally, both affecting our economies and ecosystems. If you would like to learn more about invasive pests, stick with us at the end of the video. Hello, this is Matt Wilhelm, and today we're going to tie the closed winged lanternfly. Materials for today, we're going to be using a size 8 uh, dry fly hook. We're going to be using for the legs medium black rubber bands. For the wing, we'll be using some gray hen feathers. For the body, We'll be using yellow foam that I've uh, pre-cut and pre-colored, and I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, and what else? And we'll be using uh, some pink marker to put a little pink highlight on the other on the underside of the feathers, and also a black marker to put some of the distinguishing black marks on the top of the feather. And we'll be using some white uh, six dot thread for this fly. Oh, and some gray dubbing for the thorax. I think that covers the materials. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a thread base down the hook all the way down to the curve. Cut off the tag. Now the body, like I said, the body is yellow foam. And what I did here is, is I took a black marker and I colored the top of the marker or um, the top of the foam and colored it black. And then on the underside, I put a black margin on the yellow foam and made some little like abdominal uh, type markings on it, which will, because this is the, ab abdom the abdomen of the insect. Okay, so this is actually yellow foam that I've colored with black marker. Now, if you want to, you can mate a piece of black foam to a piece of yellow foam with glue and cut it, but I just went with a black marker and, and colored it myself that way. So first thing I'm gonna do is, is um, with the yellow side down, I'm going to, I'm sorry, yellow side up, I'm going to tie in a little counterclockwise spin. I'm going to tie down that little point right there on that piece of foam. All right, and then I'm gonna move my thread forward a little bit, and I'm gonna pull that foam right over, and I'm going to, I'm about at the halfway point of the hook right here, and I'm gonna tie that foam down again right there, just like that, okay? Okay, I've got that tied down, and I'll clip off uh, the excess right here. There we go. Now what I'm gonna do is, you can see that that yellow is showing through again, so I'm gonna take my black marker and I'm just gonna kinda of touch that up a little bit, get that yellow out of there. Yeah. <clears throat> and then really tie that down. There we go, so there's the abdomen. All right, next thing we need are rubber band legs. And what I've done is, there's, there's six legs on this insect, of course, and what I did is I pre-knotted a bunch of the legs to save time, but I will show you how to knot a pair. I'll, the sixth set I will knot for you. So uh, this is two rubber bands, two medium rubber bands together, not a single rubber band, but two. And I'm just going to put a half hitch right in that rubber band. And that makes a jointed leg that you can use for grasshoppers or anything you might desire to tie, okay? All right, so now we're gonna put rubber band legs on. And I'm gonna tie this rubber band leg in right here, right where I, right where I tied in the, uh, the abdomen. Try to make that lay a little bit more flat. There we go. One thing with rubber bands is that they, they tend to wanna to turn a little bit when you apply pressure to the threads, so you have to manipulate them just a little bit. There we go, that's pretty good. And then I'm gonna put one on the other side. 
same length. Okay, got those tied down. And we'll get rid of these right here. So there's the back legs. Now, I'm going to tie in the middle pair of legs just in front of those. And then one on the other side. A lot of legs on this lantern moth. A little counterclockwise spin of the thread. Make it the same length as the one on the other side. Tie that in nice and secure. Cut off. Tie those little guys down. Now we're going to put a third, a third set in right here. <clears throat> One thing I typically do if I know I'm going to be tying a lot of flies that have jointed legs is I'll just sit down and pre-joint pre a whole bunch of legs before I even get started with my, the fly I'm going to tie just to save some time, which is what I did here today. Okay, and I'll trim off the excess here, that leg, and then I'll tie another one, the sixth and final, right here next to it. And I have these pointed, pointed forward, the, the joint that is, I'm trying to make that rubber band behave a little bit better. There we go. All right, those are tied in. All right, now. I'm just going to trim these up a little shorter just to get that part out of the way so it's easier to work with here at the end. Trim these a little bit shorter, these beyond the knots. And then these. Now, what I'm going to do to kind of cover up some of this, I'm going to bring my thread back. To where I started right here and I'm going to put some black dubbing one material I'm sorry I forgot to mention I'm going to put a little bit of black dubbing I've got many colors here but I'm going to use the black and I'm going to put a little bit of black dubbing on my thread just to cover up all of those thread wraps that I just went through with those uh those legs. So I'm going to twist a little bit of black dubbing on here just to conceal the thread so it looks a little bit better. Put a th real thin rope of dubbing on here. That might do it. A little bit more up here. Okay. <coughs> So I'm going to make my first wrap right here, first couple wraps right here behind the legs. And then I'm going to come in between. And this black dubbing is going to cover up all of those white, some of that thread right there. One more in between those. And then in front, in between, and just like that. A little bit more back here. There we go. Perfect. All right. Now we need to tie in the wing. All right. So we're going to take some gray, <clears throat> some gray hen feathers. All right. I'm going to try to find two that are pretty equal in size and I'll mate them together. But before I do, what I'm going to do is, is that the lantern fly in its, in its closed wing uh, uh, option or, or variety or uh, pattern, on the underside of these wings, they have a faint pink, 
faint pink markings. So I'm gonna use, this is just a highlighter. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make some pink markings on the undersides <coughs> of these two wings. All right. And I'm just gonna do this on top of my, my dubbing box. And I'm just gonna take this uh, pink highlighter and just make just make some pink markings on here and that will kind of show through the the feather a little bit there we go and then the tips and then the other one I guess while I have the feathers here, I'm going to mark the top of the wing. Um, this lantern fly has some distinguishing uh, black markings also on top of the wing. So I'm going to take my my black marker and I'm just going to make I'm just going to make some some black dots on here. It's kind of a distinguishing characteristic. And then, of course, the other one. All right. Now, now I'm going to, you can see that I have marked both of those feathers. Okay. Now I'm going to put these two feathers together. So they lay right on top of one another. Try to mate the tips a little bit. There we go. Now I'm going to tie in this feather. Now we want these feathers to be a little bit longer than the shank of the hook. And that's going to be pretty good right about there. So I'm going to hold that with my left hand and I'm going to tie this down. Now, when you tie this feather down, you want to be slightly, your thread should be just behind that last set of legs. Okay. Now I'm going to cut off this front part. Try not to cut my rubber bands that I just took so much time to tie in. Here we go. And kind of clean that up a little bit right there. And clean that up a little bit right there. All right, now I'm going to wrap my thread back just a little bit. The last thing we need to put on for the thorax is a little bit of gray dubbing. Okay. So I'm going to, going to put some gray dubbing on my thread and I'm going to dub a thorax. Remember when you work with dubbing, you only need a little bit at a time. You want to build up a base. You don't want to put too much on. You always add more. All right, we're going to see what that does. If I need more, I will add more. I'm wrapping back over top of that feather just a little bit. And yes, I am going to need more. So I'll add a little bit more to my thread. Like I said, there's, there's other materials that you can use for this fly. Different wing materials you can, you can glue together, black foam and yellow foam. Um, but for simplicity's sake, it's sometimes easier just to Use, use some markers and color it up yourself. Okay, I'll move this forward, try to keep that consistent. There we go. And I'm gonna lift up these legs, make a head. And I will half hitch first, just to hold it, and then a whip finish. A little bit difficult to whip finish with all those legs in the way. Just got to manipulate the thread up underneath them. There we go.
And there it is, the closed wing lanternfly. The insect tied in this video is an invasive pest, which means it's an invasive species. Invasive species are those that are introduced to a new area and when they do, they cause harm to things like our forest, agriculture, and to even native plants and animals. The spotted lanternfly was first found in Pennsylvania in 2014. It is now found in 11 nearby states. Unfortunately too, this insect really likes a lot of different plants, including 70 different species found in the U.S. One of its favorites is called the tree of heaven. It also likes cultivated grapes and fruit and hardwood trees. If you see an unusual insect or plant damage, you can report it using edmaps.org. Also remember, don't move firewood, just buy it where you burn it.